In the workshop, a Stuart Models boiler feed pump, how it works and what to do with it, apart from painting it green of course. I bought this recently and this is the first test run of it. The first thing to do is to put plenty of oil on it, not forgetting to put some oil into the inlet pipe to feed the cylinder. As soon as I open the valve on the compressor, the engine bursts into life. So how do they work these things? They're very clever indeed. The larger cylinder on the left is the main steam cylinder and the other cylinder assembly on the right hand side is the water cylinder. This is the part that pumps water. And this part of the unit is really just like a hand pump except it's steam that's doing the work instead of your hand. As the pump ram in the cylinder moves to the left a small amount of water is drawn into the water pump cylinder and then as the water pump ram moves towards the right the water that's been pulled into the cylinder via the bottom connector is pushed out of the top connector. So really as I said earlier it works exactly the same way as a hand pump. Just like the hand pump it has a ball valve on the inlet and a ball valve on the outlet. I intend to repaint this pump but I'm removing the paint entirely from the union nuts so I'm going to put these into a little pot of cellulose thinners to be dissolving away the paint while I try and explain how the pump works. The central pump rod is really two pistons in one but in the steam cylinder end of the pump there's a larger piston. Irrespective of the size a single cylinder steam engine can only start if the piston is in the correct place when the steam is admitted. So how does this work? The piston always starts and moves down the cylinder whether it's in the right position or not. That's because in the steam chest which is very small to start with there's also another cylinder. It's a very tiny cylinder and it has a very small piston in it called a shuttle piston which drives its own slide valve and admits and exhausts the steam to the opposite side of the main piston respectively. And the main piston controls the other slide valve as the fork that's attached to the piston rod knocks the first main valve back and forth. I know this is a very simplistic explanation of how a pump works but if you google how does a weir pump work and I'll put the spelling on the screen you will see how it works it's the same principle. The valve arrangements are often different and varied but the principle is basically the same. This small Stuart steam pump is very well made. All it had was a couple of pieces of threaded brass tube for the inlet and exhaust. What I'm making at the moment are adapters so that I can pipe it up properly using quarter by 40 unions. And instead of making these from scratch I'm just turning down one side of a commercial threaded union. And why not chuck a piece of hexagon and make one from scratch? Well this is just quicker. I'm being lazy really. I screwed the commercial quarter by 40 union into a union nut, clamped that in the chuck, turned down the other side to 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter and here I'm using a die stock to cut the thread. And why am I not using my normal tailstock die holder, I hear you say? That's because I normally reserve my tailstock die holders for the more common thread sizes that I cut frequently. This is a 3 sixteenths by 40 thread and I don't cut these very often. This die holder by the way is a homemade one. It's a bit of an apprentice piece, obviously made many years ago by some apprentice in the engineering industry. After making these two thread adapters, I'm fitting them to the pump. I'm using some Loctite 542 and a small copper washer on each one. This is the main steam inlet union being screwed into position on the steam chest. I'm of course taking great pains not to over tighten the union. I've got to be especially careful on the exhaust side because as you can see the cladding on the cylinder is slightly proud of the hole. So if you over tighten this it's going to crease the cladding and I don't want to do that. I'll alter this arrangement after I've painted the engine. All I have to do is just machine a little bit more of the hexagon part down to a diameter that will fit into the hole in the cladding. And that way there will be no chance of myself or anyone in the future over tightening this and ruining the cladding. As you can see very clearly in this clip the exhaust union is not tightened very firmly against the cladding. The application of some Loctite 542 on both of the 3 16 by 40 threads will make sure that there are no leaks. But from my experience these pumps do leak. The steam waves are very very close to the edge. So often you'll get steam leaks around the end covers and the steam chest. And I've always personally found that these pumps are always prone to leaking slightly. The worst thing about them is they do use quite a lot of steam to pump a very small amount of water into the boiler. But they're really nice looking things. 
They're a great thing to have on your steam plant. It'll still look better in green though. Just in case you didn't notice, earlier on in the video I put the nuts and union cones in a pot of cellulose thinners. And just to explain as usual, cellulose thinners, as it's called in England, is called lacquer thinner in the USA. And it's doing a good job of getting rid of this paint anyway. And here's a top tip. Always keep the plastic caps from aerosol tins. They're very handy for holding small amounts of cellulose thinners to remove paint from nuts like this. No abrasive is necessary and very little scrubbing is required. The cellulose thinners just dissolves the paint and it drops off into the bottom of the pot. So for the moment I'm just going to fit these nuts back onto the pump then I'm going to put the pump on the shelf while I decide what to do with it. It has to have the right boiler. It's far too big for that smaller boiler I showed earlier and I haven't got one the right size. What I need is another 504 but I do think that a hand pump and an injector and a Stuart pump like this would be so over the top on that steam plant that I've just made using a 504 boiler. Since I completed the 504 boiler project, I've noticed that quite a few 504 boilers have suddenly appeared on eBay. People think, oh, well, they're obviously worth a bit of money, we'll put them on eBay. In fact, I nearly bought another one last week, I must stop this addiction. I wonder if there's an organisation called 504 Boilers Anonymous. Well, maybe not. The next thing I'm going to do with this is give it a steam test, and then we'll see how good it really is. You can never tell how good these pumps are until you steam them. I do like the look of these small Stuart pumps, but I wouldn't want to make one. So until the steam test, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.